Hey guys, Clumsy here and welcome back to X-Plane 11. Absolutely loving this sim. Absolutely loving this plane. And now that I've tried Fat Sim, I don't think I can let it go. But we'll have to let it go just for now. So if, if you guys didn't uh, see it, I tried Fat Sim for the first time ever a couple of days ago. Go ahead and check out the footage, the VOD from that. I posted it already in my channel. And it's been quite an experience. Learned a lot of things and I realized something. I need complete access to graphs. I need a compiled list that is easy to access and will uh, help me, will guide me so that I will not uh, encumber and be a burden to our fellow uh, air traffic controllers yeah, because they're doing, doing such a good job and uh, I don't want to be a pain in the neck. Yeah, so and I found a, uh, a subscription service called Navigraph. You might be familiar with it. I uh, only just found out about it though and uh, it's a paid subscription service. There are like monthly and annual uh, plans. I tried the monthly first to check it out and so in this video we'll be focusing on the different features, what it can offer and uh, we'll be doing a full flight so it might be a long video but at least we'll be enjoying the entire way and I'll be showcasing the different features as we go along, right? So that's how we... Uh, check out if this is a good purchase basically or not we will see <laughs> because I, I, be, I literally just uh, paid for it a few minutes ago so we'll go and uh, explore it together now all right so there are two components to this Navigraph thing the first one is the flight management system database so if we go to our FMS and uh, check this out there is no longer any warning that says uh, database not updated or database outdated something like that and that's because if you look at the status the active database is now April to May I think that's the validity more or less and that's amazing I mean I think I was using like a 2017 or 2018 version and I've been noticing that when I was planning my routes in Sky Vector and in other uh, uh, flight planning uh, websites the procedures, the waypoints were not matching and it was a really a real pain to uh, continue planning with the inconsistent data. So now I know that I have the most updated one and now I can sure that uh, whatever I'm planning here is going to be consistent with what I see in SkyVector and other of the, uh, the uh, updated um, websites. Yeah. So today we are flying from Atlanta to Kilo Charlie Lima Tango to Charlotte International Airport. Um, let me have a look at the runway that we have to use in Atlanta. So we actually have uh, 15008 knots. So that's going to be the best is, uh, well the nearest to us right now is 08 left. And that's not so bad. So we'll pick that one. So let's pick 08 left and actually the SID should be filled too. And how do I know that? That's because I was consulting with the uh, different sites. So I started in Sky Vector. I'm not really sure if there's a better way for this. Let me know in the comments what your uh, workflow is. So for me, I like to start in Sky Vector because there are the routes here which tell you which are the famous routes and you can have like a template. So I picked this one with a heart, cleared 272 times. This is taking us, for using the fail to departure, taking us to fail waypoint, direct to controller, and then taking the John Z2 arrival towards uh, Charlotte. Yeah, and that's where we're going to plan now. And uh, I also found a uh, FS economy job for it. Let me just check that uh, it's still there. Yeah, okay, it's still there. Plane is still rented, good. Okay, so that is the plan. Now, do we transition to, do we use this transition? I think it's Greenwood. Now, this is where the second component enters. This is, this is my, why I purchased it in the first place, because I want easy access to charts. And uh, Navigraph actually comes with its own software, as you can see here, where I can uh, select flights, go and search for airports, favorite some of them, search for waypoints and all that stuff for us in particular we're interested in this flight 
And if I look at the route, uh, that is the exact route that I entered. This is coming from uh, Sky Vector Field 2, Field Controller, Jonesy 2. Sound familiar? That's the one. And you also see the route here. Now, we don't see the distance though. We don't see the uh, total distance of the flight. I think you can look at the distance per leg, but not the SID and the STAR. Those broken lines, those are the SIDs and STARS. This particular flight only has a very short... Uh, <laughs> yeah, only that bit, I think. How long is that? We can click that. that that's actually just 3 miles. 3 nautical miles from fail to controller. And uh, the rest is SID and STAR. So it's quite a an exceptional uh, flight plan, but yeah, it's one of the most used here. Okay, alright, so with that, the thing I like about this is you see your departure airport, you see your arrival airport, and you have super easy access to charts through here. Yeah, you just click it, and you can select via the type of chart you want. So for example, let's select only taxi, so it's even color-coded, so it's easy to understand. And that's the airport info. If we need to access that easier later, we can bookmark that like so and it will appear on the right side. And here we can actually see and study all the stuff. Very easy to zoom in and out and all that kind of thing. Yeah. And then we can also review the John Z2 departure, which I bookmarked already here. Actually, my bad. It's failed to departure. And we can see the notes very clearly. This is actually customized to my account. You can see chart link to Navigraph account. Yeah, so it's uh, pretty secure. And that's the GRD, that's the Greenwood. But in our flight plan, we're not taking this part. We'll be stopping at the uh, controller or controller. <laughs> I don't know how you pronounce it. I'm going to stick with controller, right? Fail and then controller, remember? So we'll not be taking Greenwood. So that is the answer, basically. One thing I'd like to show, which is super cool, and I, this is going to be really useful, is this moving maps feature. So this actually has like a built-in plugin. Not built-in, but this has a plugin to explain. So it connects to explain via plugin, and you can select toggle moving maps. And then what it will do is it will actually look at explain, get the GPS coordinates there, plug that in here, and we see we are actually here in the GA ramp the ga area yeah so that's and that updates in real time so we can see where we are and that's going to be super helpful when it comes to taxiing we'll also be able to see that when we're on the map and as we go into the different areas go into the different charts we'll see where we are then and that's just amazing that's just mind-blowing immersion right there this is like the real deal now okay but yeah but wait, there's more. So imagine taxiing with that moving map. That's going to be very helpful, right? But I mean, that's going to be a bit hard because you would need to like alt tab and uh, see where we are in the runway and then go back here. So how can we fix that? Well, amazingly enough, one of my favorite uh, plugins, the AV tab, I'm using this all the time. And uh, you see here, there's actually Navigraph integration built in. And I logged in here, I linked my Navigraph account here, so when we go to airports, that one we went to, the usual one with the frequencies, the runways, the weather, there's a new button here where we can look at the different charts that we saw in the app itself. And we can look at the airport chart here and we can also see our real-time location there now. And so this is what's going to be essential when we start taxiing so I don't get lost. So if the air traffic controller tells us uh, taxi via Alpha 5, which is this one, so we go through there. Alpha, which is this uh, horizontal line here, taxiway, and hold short of runway 8 left, so they will be stopping over there. So yeah, so follow my mouse. And uh, because we see where we are exactly, I won't have such a hard time anymore. That's just oh, a total game changer for me. I love it. Anyway. So yeah, let's get started with the plane, uh, let's get started with the flight, and uh, let's uh, see how useful this will be. Okay, so how far have I gone in the flight plan? Phil, uh, Charlie, November, Tango, Lima, Romeo, direct, and then we'll be arriving using the star, John Z2. Now the thing here with John Z2, there are quite a lot. 
But if we look at the wins for Charlotte, we'll see that the wins are actually 160 at 8 knots. And that means the runway facing south, the 18, is going to be the best. Now, for some reason, the 18 center isn't here. I would have liked that because 18 center is the longest runway. But I guess we'll have to do with 18 right. I mean, 9,000 is more than enough for this plane, but just to be safe. Anyway, so I pick uh, John Z2, 18 right. I go, look at that. Doesn't that look familiar? Controller, transition. And then let's pick, do we pick ILS? Is it bad weather? Not really, it's actually pretty clear. So let's just pick RNAV. It's actually more convenient for RNAV in this plane. Now, I'm not sure what RUDK is, but we can check that very easily via either the AV tab or uh, in uh, Navigraph. When I'm not rushing, when I big up, need a bigger picture, I alt tab. But when I need something where I still need to see the runway, and see, see my surroundings, I go AV tab. So we have a choice. That's that's amazing. So we go to Charlotte. We go and look at the approach charts. We pick 1-8 right. And we say uh, RNAV, right? Is what we were looking for. RNAV, that one. 1-8 uh, right. I think that's this one. And also it says aircraft position outside of chart bound. So it cannot really show us here because we're not yet in this area. Which is very accurate. Very nice. Okay, Rod Key is that one. And Rod Key is 7,000 feet mean sea level. Yeah. And if we compare that with our existing legs. Let's see. At the end of our... Arrival, Jordan, we are actually at 6,000 feet already. So it doesn't make sense to pick that. So I won't select that anymore. I won't select Rodki. Because that will mean we have to descend to 6,000 and then climb to 7,000, which is a bit weird. Right? So let's take that. Let's go and uh, maybe get a, a cruising altitude of flight level 270. Descent of 3 degrees. And let's go and execute that. There you go. That's quite long, actually. Is that right? That seems wrong to me. 570. Huh. Well, we'll see. Maybe it's because of the vectors. Anyway, so if I look here... Ah, because there's discontinuity. Okay, let's let's fix the discontinuity first. Uh, the, the FMS flight plan always has that. I don't know why. The, uh, the laminar FMS, the default FMS has that thing. My bad. Go to flight plan. Delete discontinuity. Uh, no, not that. Delete discontinuity. It's above. There we go. Yeah, controller. And then John Z2, 18 right. Controller. Yeah, perfect. Okay, there you go. Now, there will be some warnings. And we'll ch double check what that is. If we go to legs, it says enable 6000 at Jordan. Jordan here, 6,000, says unable. Why? Because we'll be coming from area at 9,000. That means uh, to reach 6,000, we'll have to descend 3.1 degrees, which is a bit uh, steep. More steep, 0.1% degree steeper than what we planned. So it had a warning, I think. That's why. And then the vectors say... 5.5 degrees, but that's not really accurate because the vectors are not that short. It will uh, depend on the air traffic control. And we can basically just ignore that. Yeah. Yeah, so that should be good. We should be okay there. Okay. There we go. Top of descent, 142. Yeah, we should be fine. We should be fine. And since we're headed east, more or less, so we get a uh, an odd altitude if we're going west we get an even altitude i think that is the best practice or the normal way you do it okay good runway 08 left okay 
we are good to go and then we intercept so let's just double check the legs one last time because i'm really interested if it's accurate now i'm getting so many numbers here which i don't get before like above and below let's look at cake here this is part of the john z2 arrival and if we pick uh, let's go and get a that as a marker 18 center you can remove that from the bookmark john z2 there we go cake yeah see here it's uh in between 17 thousand to flight level 260 so that is uh, 170 above 260 below yeah that's exactly it and all the others are pretty accurate as well so all staying within a specific altitude this is when a proper vnav will be very useful but yeah i don't really have that with this plane it's a bit crude at the moment so we'll have to practice it yeah so i might screw up but thankfully we're not in vatsim yet so i can do a dry run anyway all right anyway let's go and do that start this trip let me squawk 2200 that is the frequency you uh, assign yourself in vatsim when you don't have any when there is no atc around so we'll just simulate that okay okay let's start the plane turn off avionics do we have a ground power unit we do let's go ahead and uh, get everybody loaded uh x economy load everybody there you go five people that should also have updated our fuel tanks there you go and now we can close the door and now we can start the plane right let's arm the oxygen hide that for the minute hide that as well fuel tanks on for a few seconds i should actually have my beacon and nav lights on arm ignition turn on ecu remove this because it's blocking my view set trims to normal and uh what else am i missing well we'll see later if i missed anything start engine 2 n2 climbing yeah at 12 percent n2 we can actually introduce fuel by doing that that will make the itt climb n1 picking up oil pressure is there after a while starter will be cutting off here the light will go off there we go and that will be the sign when we can actually turn on our generator there you go the annunciator there for the right generator went off the one for the left is still there because we haven't started the left engine yet let's go ahead and start it n2 12 percent introduce fuel Let the temperature climb. Let the engine spool up. Wait for the cutoff. And then we can start the engine as well. And now we can actually turn on avionics. Don't forget the bleed air. We know that has a very bad effect. If you don't want to know what I'm talking about, you can check my first video with the Premier 1A. There was a bit of disaster there. Let's set landing altitude here based on the landing altitude in the airport we're arriving. 749 feet, so let's round that to the nearest one. Actually, we can round that to 800. Yeah, that should be okay. Everything good? Alright, anti-skid, turn that on as well. Alright, now we are ready to taxi. Let's assume we got our clearance. In this airport, usually, you're at standby only when you're not moving. Once you start taxiing, set to mode Charlie. Let's bring that back because it looks cool. Should I do that all professional looking thing where you check your flight controls? Okay, let's simulate that I did that properly. Alright, <clears throat> so from there, I think I should be able to turn on 
my track IR. But I had to get my cap first. So, let me just wear it one second. I'm with you now. Reset track IR. Another wing. Turn it on and we are ready. Okay. Do I sound a bit different? Okay, let's go. Now let's go and test out this cool taxiing feature. Let's go and simulate that we are taxiing via Alpha 5. Or let's go with Alpha 3 this time. Alpha 3, Alpha, and then hold short runway 8 left. Okay? So let's keep that open. And let's keep that on the side like this. Right, flight plan, legs, and nav radio. Altimeter. Did I set the altimeter right? Well, we'll check. Altimeter is 3008. 3008, uh, just 1.01 .01 away. Good. Alright, let's get going. Remove the parking brake. Let's get moving. Now initial altitude here will be 10,000. So let me set that while we're taxiing. In this I was able to get from the airport as well. So if you look at the uh, departure uh, which departure was that the fill too I think would mention that as well I saw it somewhere yeah, and look at that our uh, location in the map is also updating in real time can we also check if that's updating also in the Navigraph app where are we Go to the airport. Yeah, there we are. It is updating. That is super cool, isn't it? So we're actually approaching Alpha 5. So that is Alpha 5. If I didn't have any map, I would have to look there. And uh, when you're f when you're far, it's quite hard. Yeah, so this is very beginner friendly. Yeah, I like it. I need all the help I can get because. I'm getting flustered enough coordinating with ATC. So every bit of help they can offer, these apps can offer, I'll take. This might mean not be the right way to taxi, but I mean it's an experiment. It's an exploratory thing. I think Alpha 5 might have been the, the right way to do it. No one crossing. No one crossing. There you go. And this is Alpha 3. Perfect. Alright, no one there? Of course not. <laughs> this is our practice flight from Atlanta to Charlotte. Now while we're taxiing, let me go ahead and open Pito Heat. Windshield Heat. Unlock the lift dump in case of uh, rejected takeoff. What else? As we approach the runway, I will need to uh, open my lights as well. Okay. Now with this one, we can see the runway heading is actually 095. If you look at the uh, 8 left, that map, let me move my mouse. You can see where my mouse is. 8 left, 095 heading. So we can actually adjust our heading already. And go all the way around. 095 is somewhere like there. 095 exactly. Okay. And maybe stay in the middle. This is the ILS hold. But the actual hold for now, because weather is good, is all the way over here. There we go. So let's assume that we got cleared for takeoff. 
Let's go and uh, simulate this a bit. Premier 461 Kilo Tango. Cleared for takeoff. Runway 08 left. So let's do that so I won't need this anymore. Normally, you would need to set your uh, V1 rotation speeds as well, but it's not that critical with this plane. There, there are some default values which you can keep and it wouldn't be too bad. Flight level change, um, now what I've seen in the uh, departure is that we should keep a speed of 250 knots. So let's do that. It's going to take off. There's a bit of crosswind oh, to the right. 8 knots. So I'm going to keep a little bit of deflection with the ailerons just to be safe. And rotate. Positive rate. Gear up. Let's go no damper, autopilot, and uh, nav. There you go. So what that will do is it will allow us to speed up until 250 knots, and then the plane will pitch up to maintain 250 and continue at a climbing rate. And that's just one of the warnings. We can ignore that. Okay? But... Uh, takeoff is successful so we can go ahead and close the ignition lock the lift dump we never want that opening mid-flight and now we can check where we are in the map here so we're not here anymore yeah so we are actually outside already so if we look at the navigraph it will have a warning there, aircraft position outside of chart mounds. So if we go back, we'll see that we're actually outside the airport already. And we are making our way towards the departure. It's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Now our final cruising altitude will be flight level 270. Let's say we got a uh, command from air traffic control to fly, to climb and maintain 1, 4,000, 14,000, 1 kilo tango. So let's go and climb higher, 140, and let me go and have a look. where that uh, note about the 250 knots is and let's see if I'm right and if I understood correctly and you guys can let me know if I understood that wrong okay so if I look at the charts in uh, Atlanta oh, was it this one I think it was the field 2 or nav okay you, here we can see right that's where we're going to Ronnie our nav to Ronnie so we went 095 degree heading until we intercepted 83 degrees and then we turned towards Ronnie and we're exactly on that line this is so cool you know not just looking at the charts blindly but seeing where you are exactly there yeah that's just amazing so here is what it says accelerate to 250 knots if unable advise both tower and departure control so it really wants you to keep that 250 knots all the way through so that you can get away as fast as possible from this area and that kind of makes sense good let me just clean up the radar a bit just so we can see only our waypoints so we are we just passed Ronnie actually next waypoint is Igibe yes past 10,000 feet close our landing lights Actually, no smoke and seatbelt signs should always be on. Well, actually, seatbelt signs we can already turn off. That should be fine. Good. Always align our heading manually to our 
direction to our track. 1,000 feet away from 14,000. Let's go and uh, assume that we got a clearance for 230. Flight level 230. Climb and maintain 230. One kilo tango. But yeah, this is a good practice run. So we can get familiar with the uh, tools that we have. And then once we're confident with our tools, then we can use all those to our advantage instead of being a liability, right? That's uh, hopefully how it works. The challenging part later is that we'll have that part where we go and uh, navigate via vectors without air traffic control. So that basically means we're on our own then. But we'll, we'll, we'll fi figure out a way to do it. We'll figure out a way to do it. Right? We'll see. We'll see how that works. 001, 003, okay. Let's worry about that later when we get there. We are approaching Phil Waypoint. <clears throat> and uh, as we cruise here, then we will be able to check out the charts more and be able to uh, explore more the features of Navigraph. Where are we now? Yeah, we're still in the SID. We have not yet left SID. I think we'll be able to do that once we reach a fill. Then we can go and accelerate. But let's double check that against the flight plan, the legs here. Yeah, 250 until fill and then we can go ahead and uh, go as fast as we want, basically. Till our heart's content. 18,000 feet, let's go ahead and set the standard barometric pressure, pressing this one, 2992, better, there we go. Let's go ahead and study already how it will be, so I guess I can turn, I can close this now. Atlanta, we are finished with that. Charlotte will be the next challenge. Let's go ahead and open the airport diagram. So we'll be planning on landing on 1-8 right and let's say we want to plan around uh, to exit via Whiskey 4 or 3. Whiskey 4 will be ideal, I think. Uh, the, the question is, where is the GA parking here? And this is, this is what's amazing, you know. Normally when, it's, when you're cruising already, you don't, you don't do anything, right? But now, you can actually study charts all the way through. And that's just fulfilling all, all my nerdiness. I don't know, I really like that concept. So let me go back to Navigraph so we can have a full screen. Yeah, we're still not beyond fill. And uh, we can verify that anyway. And I guess there's also a dark side here because uh, one might be a bit, get a bit complacent and might rely too much on the tools. But I mean, it's useful. So it's a good balance between both, I would say. And I'm very happy to have uh, purchased uh, Navigraph. I think it cost me around 8 euros for a month. That's how it costs now. Okay, let's go ahead. Flight level 270, 1 kilo tango. Just assuming that we got uh, air traffic control guiding us. And sometimes they'll direct us to waypoints, give us shortcuts. But in this case, we're just sticking to the plan. Okay, now that we are beyond um, the departure, I can go ahead and speed up now, beyond 250. Actually, I might have been able to do that once I went beyond uh, 10,000, right? But my problem is, normally, for me, I think the best climb rate for this plane is 220 knots, so I could not actually slow down while I was still in the SID because it was uh, explicitly specified to maintain a speed of 250 knots. So, but now we can actually go and climb higher.
and maintain a speed of 220 knots instead. That will give us a very high and fast climb rate. Yeah, that's just wow, 5,000 feet per minute at one point. That's insane. How many degrees was that? Almost 10 degrees pitch up. It's wonderful. Let's double check our pressure. Cabin altitude is, uh, what, less than 1,000 feet. That's good. So that means even though we are at uh, 25,000 feet inside the cab, inside the cabin, it feels like only 1,000 feet pressure. So that means uh, we, can breathe. we can breathe very well. So that's actually very useful. <laughs> Breathing, right? <laughs> anyway, flight level 270. Why didn't it ding? It should have dinged and warned me of the 1,000 feet warning. But fine. And we should be leveling off at 270 shortly. Have we switched to max speed already? No, not yet. As we speed up, probably that will happen. We'll see it, I think, once we reach. We, we do have a more relevant max speed here already, though, but I think that is based on the transition here in climb or in cruise, that target speed when 300 knots matches with 0.8 max speed. That is when the speed tape will switch to max speed. Something along those lines. Top of descent, 80 miles, we have so much time left. But now we can speed up. So now we are speeding up. Crew airspeed is at around uh, 367 knots and climbing. Ground speed is 386 knots. We have a bit of uh, tailwind, thankfully. Yeah, 15 knot tailwind. And that is looking pretty good, actually. Okay, good. <clears throat> so let's go and uh, explore the charts in uh, Charlotte. Look, at that's where we are currently. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Goodness, this is what we see in the real pilots nowadays. They have their iPads with the different apps for flight and all that stuff. For our, for us simmers, Navigraph is our tool of choice. And I'm, so far, I'm pretty happy with my purchase. I think I will be, at this rate, I will be purchasing the annual plan. Because it's uh, much more worth it than buying it per month but we'll see we'll see okay let me turn off track ir for a moment let's go back to navigraph and let's go sightseeing okay let's go and study some charts i wish top of descent would be marked here as well <laughs> i guess it's not that synchronized okay let's go to uh, charlotte Go and check out the John Z2 RNAV. John Z2, we are still not here. Shouldn't we be already here though? Let me have a look. Ever Cook. Let me see. The legs. Cake. John Z. Yeah, we should be here already. Cook. Okay. Well, 43 miles from Coop. So we just passed Ever. Let's see where Ever is. Ever is there. So we should be seeing ourselves here now. Maybe there is some uh, desync sometimes because it's able to match our, our uh, GPS there, coordinates, but it's not tracking us here. It's a bit weird. Yeah, maybe that chart is not pretty well uh, configured. I'm also not exactly on the line with a bit of OCD there, but I guess that's a bit of room for error with third-party tracking tools. Okay, anyway, let's go ahead and study the airport. Let's go to taxi, airport info. Let's put that on the right as well. Can you reorder that? No, okay, fine. All right. So, 1-8 right. Let's plan for uh, Whiskey 4 or Whiskey 3. 
whiskey for ideally then if we want to park maybe we can go and check the parking gates here okay that, that's the one uh, this is 1-8 center let's go and look for the GA stuff hmm. dual taxi charlotte ramp so these are for the commercial planes but where is the one for GA? For hard stand parking. Is that us? Is that what it means? Let's see. That's the one. West hard stand. Lines will primarily be used for taxi on and off. Hard stand by live flights. Okay. No, not really. Because these can be used for big ones as well. Yeah. Let's see. Concourse A. Is there even something for GA here in this? Uh, let's see, low visibility taxi chart runway one eight right. So many charts, yeah. These are not available in Sky Vector. So when it's low visibility, you have different taxiways. Looks like, yeah, you can exit via Whiskey Four, Whiskey Three, or Whiskey. Go straight through. American Airlines midfield cargo ramp. What that one? NG ramp. This is so cool. I don't know. This is just so nice. And then, did I mention it already? But there, there are uh, iOS and Android apps for this one as well. So I can access it even if, if I'm away from my computer. Just study charts. So I'm planning something. I'm planning a flight. I can study it even if I'm out of the house and so when I get back I am more uh, prepared yeah that's uh, technology right there it's amazing air cargo general aviation ramp that's the one okay that's the one wow that's so far away so we'll be taxiing from whiskey to Sierra uh, Foxtrot what is HS2 is there a note about that HS2 Runway incursion hotspots. Be alert when entering the depicted areas. See 109A for description of hotspots. 109A is this one. Uh, let's see. HS2. Maybe we can see. Uh, HS2. Pilots exiting runway 18C, 36C on ta taxiway Sierra for either taxiways Echo or Foxtrot mistakenly turn left on taxiway Echo 5 and re enter the runway. Ah, okay. So that's a warning because a lot of people are making mistakes there. They're saying when you're coming from this runway, some people are actually okay exiting the runway from here, but they're turning left again to Echo 5 and they're entering back into the runway, like making a U-turn. Something along those lines, I think, is the problem. I just went back to explain because I want to double check my uh, speed. Yeah, we are coming close to the red markers let me slow down just a bit I should be fine 35 miles see yeah we can keep ourselves occupied while this uh, cruise is in place this is what real pilots do I guess huh? they study the charts they make sure they know what's next especially single pilot uh, setups like premier one driver like a uh, Baron pilot, like who else? Stevo. So we, we taxi via Whiskey 4 Sierra, uh, cross runway 18 center, Foxtrot, Mike. How else are we going there? Goodness. Mike 2, cross runway 5, Alpha 4. Alpha all the way through and then turn right to Golf Charlie Charlie 8 cross runway 36R Delta 5 and then Delta or uh, Delta 5 and then GA ramp but then with our map we don't need to memorize all those letters we can use them as a guide but we can actually just look at the map and uh, see already see where we are 
in real time. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so let's, let's double check that later because that will for sure come in handy. So this is where we'll be coming from. From the left side of the airport, we'll be taxiing all the way to the right side over here. Now I'm wishing I selected 1-8 left. Maybe I should. It's not too late, right? I can change the flight plan. I can, I can say 1-8 left. I guess, but... Wouldn't that be more risky? <laughs> yeah, that might be more dangerous actually. We'll see. Well, uh, we'll think about it when we get there. Okay, let, let me have a look at the map. Uh, top of descent is over there, right after cake. Let's double check the chart if it's updated already. So if I go back to the charts here, and I check uh, Chonzi 2 arrival. Yeah, I should be here already. Right? I think. Does it need to update? It is updating. Yeah, maybe it's just buggy. Let me try it inside explain. So if I go for uh, this airport, we go back, we go uh, approach, no, arrival, Jonesy 2. Jonesy 2 R nav, so we see where the problem is. If it's in the chart itself, no, it's in the GPS, looks like. Because the the chart is able to detect us properly that we're here. When we're in, in when we're inside AVTAB. But the Navigraph chart here is not. So I think what I'll do is I will refresh it. I will remove the broadcast. Turn it off. And then I'll start broadcasting again. And turn it on. Let's see if that works. No, it still doesn't work. Okay, there, there's something wrong with the GPS here, I think. But that's fine. At least here we're, we're there. We can see from here. And yeah, that's just super cool. It's actually a holding point here. You know, I don't know how to perform holding points just yet. And I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't come when I'm working with ATC because it will be quite embarrassing. I need to learn that. Fix entry stall. That will depend on where you are, which waypoints you selected, if there are holding points built in. The only holding point here is install, which is when we have a missed approach. Okay, that's fine. Oh, we're almost there. Goodness. Oh, we're almost there. Goodness. Okay. Slow down. How do we do this? Top of descent. We remove the alt and we press N. There we go. And we get at uh, automatic vertical speed. That is the VNAV workaround. I released a video for it a couple of days ago. And it's uh, proven quite useful. So the ceiling here, we'll have to be very wary of this. We'll have to be very wary of the different ceilings. Well, ceiling, floor I think would be the more appropriate word. At Chonzi, we should be above 11,000, right? Above 11,000, below 210. So let's uh, just put that as a ceiling in case the descent is wrongly calculated. At least we'll stop at 11,000 because we have the altitude selector at 11,000. In this plane, the FMS navigation, the altitude in the FMS is completely ignored. So we have to stop the descent using the altitude selector. But I think that should be fine. We should be able to make that work. Okay. Now we do have our, an R nav for 18 right, if I remember correctly. If I look at index arrival data, yeah, 18 right GNSS yes. Okay, good LPV. So that's the more accurate uh, instrumentation, I think. Don't ask me about the details. But we're good there. And if you look at the ETA, we are 11 minutes away from our destination. So that's uh, the, the time here is uh, 
how many minutes to that waypoint, to the next waypoint, to the other waypoint, and the 11 minutes in total. But that is including the vectors. And vectors are, yeah, it's, that's outside the FMS's territory. That's up to us, vectors there. So we'll have to do that on our own, kind of. We'll see how it works. We'll figure it out. Actually, we can go and figure it out now. We can make like a 90 degree turn, 90 degree turn, and maybe 45, then 45, something along those lines. So we'll be starting at 003, and we have to reach 181. So we'll need to do like a complete um, U-turn. We'll have a look at the map and feel it out, okay? Flight level 210, 21.3, descending 11,000. Can I speed up? Can I slow down? I can actually slow down bit by bit. Let me have a look at the Jonesy 2. If there's any particular speed limit. Yes, 250 knots at Jonesy. So we have to actually be slowing down already to 250 knots because we are only 2 nautical miles away from Jonesy. And yeah, the Jonesy has a uh, condition of uh, you have to be within 11,000 to flight level 210 and we're flight level 197 so we are within that range that's good that's good the problem is we're not really exactly at 250 knots but maybe the ATC I'm not really sure how strict they are there but this is super cool right real-time uh, data like that I love it okay next waypoint let me Turn back track IR on. Next waypoint is uh, while also at 250. This time between 10,000 to 16,000 feet. Okay, that's fine. And I should be getting the altimeter ready at this place. Normally, air traffic control would give it for us now. Let's work via this one first. 3014. Okay, let's set that. 3014. There we go. Yeah, the good thing is we still have the vertical speed the automatic adjustment working for us. So at least it's not totally, uh, we're not totally blind. It's not totally manual. Because the more automatic it is, the more we can focus on the communication. Fuel is not doing very well, but we are almost there. So I'm hoping we make it. I'm hoping I put in the right amount of fuel. Well, we'll see shortly. Ere, Jordan, Vectors. Yeah, after all, we are descending, so we are consuming much less fuel now on our descent so it shouldn't be that bad okay next waypoint is uh, while double check right so let's go and uh, position the chart here so we see where we are after we land but for now this one is more, more important while we have to be in between 10,000 to 16,000 feet, we are already at 15,000 feet. So yeah, VNAV is not doing such a bad uh, deal here. It's doing that perfect 3 degree descent. That's amazing. I love it. And if you want to know how to make that um, VNAV workaround work in this plane, go and check out my other video. <laughs> because you have to set something up in the keys. And I have to pause the game to access that now. How's the view, guys? How's the view? I've been so consumed by charts, I've not been able to admire the view so much. And that is very unlike me. But yeah, when I get busy, I tend to forget a lot of stuff. 
Next waypoint, Freak. Freak is, uh, let's see, in between 9,000 to 11,000. The, the hard part here later is uh, this one from area to Jordan because we need to descend 3,000 in 12 miles and that will require the that's the one it was complaining a while ago but now I don't think it's complaining anymore yeah it's still 3 degrees yeah, it's not a problem it shouldn't be a problem okay yeah let's keep it <clears throat> right stick to 250 knots Actually, uh, yeah, tier 250 is fine. At Dosby, we have to be at 240 knots. And if we consult our chart here, we are there. 250 knots, Dosby. Doesn't, doesn't really say 240 there, but then we have to be at 210 at area. So I guess that kind of makes sense. Okay. So we're, we'll start slowing down after we go past uh, Freak. And let me just double check again. Okay, now we are now it's seeing us. Yeah, that's in, that's weird. Maybe the boundary for this uh, approach is at Jonze, which makes sense because it's a Jonze to Arnav arrival. So maybe it only detects until that point. Yeah, maybe. Uh, this one we can actually go down lower. I forgot to change it. Because we can actually go until nine thousand here. Now actually even. Instead of looking at the FMS, I can look at the chart and get a an easier read on what altitude I should be at. Right? 11,000 by the time we reach Freak. Um, we're at Freak already and we're still at 11,200. No one saw that. <laughs> Why is that happening? Because we have to slow down now. No, maybe the FMS is not so perfect. Is it? Yeah. It miscalculated there a bit. Uh, that's fine, just a little. Shouldn't be that critical, I guess. Yeah, if you don't have any more inputs for me, like if you know how real pilots do it, if you watch a lot of videos or if you're a pilot yourself, let me know in the comments and uh, let's have a conversation. I would love to learn about this, this stuff, you know, how it happens in real life. Super interested in that thing. And so, if you know about like how strict ATC is, the air traffic controllers are if you for example if it's 250 knots and you go at 253 knots 253 do they scold you you know st st stuff like that 210 at ere so we have to really slow down now you know what we'll go to idle just so we can reach that 210 knots in two miles i actually have speed brakes but i don't think i'll need them yeah i can make it there we go, 210 knots. Yeah, and this plane does not have auto throttle, so I'm actually adjusting the throttle on my own, and this is actually quite good. This is something I like. Turned in at 6,000. Go and uh, trigger that, remove the nav, remove the out hold, and uh, go for vertical speed again. Alright, there we go. So after this point, you see that point already where we have to make the U-turn. So this is Jordan. Maybe it's better if I show it in the chart. This is Jordan. We go straight here. And after that, it's a dead end. What that means, those lines mean, is that it's the vectoring. So air traffic control will guide you so that we can have an, uh, uh, the right track to the approach which is uh, RNAV 18 right let's open that here RNAV 18 right that's the one okay there we are okay that's good so we can see ourselves here and let me just double check that I can do the same here in uh, yeah, that, that, there we go. There we are. That's super helpful, really. Getting a second opinion on where you are. <laughs> Alright. What is the speed limit here? 210. Alright, just maintain 210 all over the entire place. That's fine. 
good. So we will be at uh, 6,000 feet by the time we arrive there and we'll be having vectors and then we will be at woven we should be at let's have a look woven 5000 around that point more or less yeah that should be fine all right so from here let's zoom in let's uh, see how ATC will do this normally let's assume a mushroom <laughs> sorry that was bad <laughs> there we are 6,000 feet let me double check uh, altimeter settings are correct refresh um, 3014 yeah that's right RNAV approach runway 18 right that's the right chart so we'll go straight here, we'll go past Woven a bit, and then we'll make a U-turn. Yes, that's the plan at least. That's the plan. So now we're going vectors. And, uh, no, actually not yet. Our vectors will be... And when we reach vectors, it shouldn't automatically adjust. There we go, okay, so we should be keeping that three degrees look at that 640 miles because it's actually up to ATC to uh, adjust us let me speed up here a bit because we've leveled off so we actually lost a bit of speed we pitched up a bit there we go double check with the charts so woven is where we want to go so we maybe can we can actually turn left and circle around bigger but I'm not so sure yeah let's do that why not let's do that let's get a bit more uh, headway in here so let's go and uh, adjust our heading 330 maybe instead of nav we press heading here so that we get adjusted based on the heading there we go right and then we get some space because we're a bit close to the runway here like, like that distance is not I'm not too comfortable turning around 180 degrees in that point I'm not sure if I'm, the plane can handle it and I'm speeding up here sorry there we go let's keep that and let's just get a feel for it what the heck was that someone just passed through no, I think that's the the weather refreshing it's a bit unnatural because the the clouds like refresh and you get jolted as a result that should be enough let's go back to our original heading 003 from there let's have a look yeah so we have a bit more distance to woven now so actually we should be able to maybe turn right more let's get 40 zero, 050 zero maybe let's see if that can work yeah let's see will this work we will see does seem possible and then maybe we can just say direct to woven what do you think okay vertical speed let's go and do that let's go and start our descent no, 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 negative. Don't go past 100. Okay, let's go and try this out. Direct woven. Normally, there should be broken lines there. There you go. So now the plane will try to go and uh, 
actually I should go and hit nav hit nav so the plane will try and turn and make that turn can it do it? I think it can do it that might not have been the best turn but I mean it worked right? <laughs> it kind of worked alright so with that in mind uh, I think we can focus on the landing now alright let's go and do that let's align runway heading which is what? I don't know 180 is the simplest is that 160? that's 180 I can close that now runway heading is 183 okay 183 it is there you go alright you can speed up a little here let me arm the ignition actually I should have turned my landing lights on also the seatbelt signs um, sync I should have turned that on a while ago that's fine unlock the lift dump that is one essential thing I should not forget again and now we should be able to plan our approach in peace and then once I land, I will open the map and I will refer to this point so we know where Whiskey 4 is. How are the winds doing? One last check with the winds. 18006 knots. If this is to be followed, then we would have a perfect headwind. Hopefully that is the case. We will see. We will see. Okay. So after we reach Woven, we should have it... We should be able to capture the glide slope now. At Emmers, we should be at 4,000 feet. It's going a bit more aggressive descent. Oh, what the heck happened there? Suddenly, it's super cloudy. <laughs> That's scary. Did the altimeter settings change as well? Yeah, because this is not really in sync with the uh, uh, few 250. Okay, so there are clouds here, so I guess that kind of makes sense. Altimeter is 3014, but in game. Okay, 3014 as well. Okay, good, fine. Let's have a look at the chart again. I need to refer to that one. 3000 is the final fix is that how we call it there is the uh, glide slope so we have to descend faster to catch that let's go and uh, double the rate of our descent there we go we are capturing the glide slope bit by bit how far away from the runway around 10 miles away from the runway do we have a uh, visual I don't see the runway just yet. That's fine. We'll make it work. We will make it work. Alright, we are approaching. Click approach. There we go. We have captured the glide slope. There's the airport. There's the runway. 1-8 right. There it is. Okay, good. Perfect. Right. Landing gear down. Let's get that bit of drag. Oh, here we go again with the landing. <laughs> oh. Setting expectations, okay? You might have noticed I'm a new pilot. <laughs> Please go easy on me. Flaps 10. Doing good there? Yeah, we're fine. Flaps 20. There we go. Keep that speed. One thousand five hundred feet. 
above ground. At 1,000 feet above, I will be removing the autopilot and flying this on my own. Flaps down. There we go. Very relaxing music. Helps calm my mind a bit. Four knots wind. Mostly headwind. That shouldn't be too bad. Okay, turned off autopilot. Turn off the yaw damper as well. And maybe pitch up a bit. Just a tad so we capture that glide slope. Keep it there. There we are. I can feel the plane wind veining. And we are a bit high, I think. So let me start getting that more aggressive descent. Lowering the throttle a bit. There we go, capturing the glide slope again. Alright. Just gradually lowering the throttle and pitching up bit by bit. Almost there. Almost there. Easy does it. Easy does it. Quiet. <laughs> Not supporting me. Pitch up. Throttle down. Pitch up. Just hold it. Float a bit. Let it fall. And there we go. That was not too bad. Lift up. Let's have a look at the airport where we are. Oh crap. Not the correct road. There we go. Whiskey 4 is up ahead. So we have enough space to uh, check it out. This is the Whiskey 4, I think. Brakes. And let's turn off the runway right here. Good. Yeah, that's Whiskey 4 indeed. Phew, that was not too bad, huh? That was not too bad. Got lucky. All right. Flaps up. One kilo tango clear of runway. One eight right, and I missed my turn there. There we go. Thanks to this real time map. I'm not so confused. Just a tad. Just went a bit over. Landing lights off. I'm going to keep my strobes on because we'll be crossing a lot of runways. Well, maybe realistically. Shut off it. Left dump. Retract. Speed brakes retract. So that's cleaned up. Yeah, more or less. Let's just taxi here and I'll perform the cleanup as we go. I'm just going to keep this map on the lower left so I have an idea where we are. Something like that. Like a GPS. Super cool. Love it. Turn off Pito Heat. You don't need that anymore. That's fine. Turn off windshield heat as well. There we are. Maybe we can go a bit faster. And we have still fuel. That's good. <laughs> we are on Taxiway Sierra right now. Doesn't, that wasn't such a bad landing, was it? Got a bit lucky there. Love it. I'm absolutely loving this Navigraph thing. <sighs> and now I feel a bit braver, just a bit braver, talking with air traffic control, knowing that at least all the procedures they will specify, the, the SIDs, the STARS, anything they say, will have a uh, corresponding SID and STAR on my FMS. And it's just a matter of me knowing where it is. Okay, let me turn on strobes because we are passing through runway 18 left. Let's assume that we got clearance to cross 18 left. But 
But anyway, we look left. We look right. No one here. Good. Alright, this is the uh, hotspot too. The one with the red circle you see in the map. Because some people turn off there, they say. Yeah, because this is a very complicated intersection. Even with the map, I'm still confused. But yeah, it looks like this is where we turn. Foxtrot. Turn right to Taxiway Mike. Turn off strobes again. Good. Maybe I should scroll right now, huh? Wow, that's complicated. So where do we go? I have no clue. Let's just wing it. <laughs> Thank goodness for these lights. We know that we're approaching a runway. Strobes again. Cross through here. What, do, what does ATC say when you're cleared to cross? And I think that's where we should have gone. Oh crap, yeah. That's where we should have gone. Because this is probably not a good move. Being on the actual runway. But that's fine, we'll make a way. We will be uh, turning off at uh, Golf. Yeah. That should work. It's not a very busy day. No one home. Everyone's sleeping. Well, to be honest, it is middle of the morning in the US right now. So, yeah, maybe not really. No one is here yet. Here we are. Golf. Straight ahead. Turn off strobes. And uh, we turn left somewhere. Which I missed again, but that's fine. Because we can actually go straight into Charlie here. Yeah, see how, how the heck are you supposed to see those letters? How small those are? How does it work in real life if you don't have a map? You really have to memorize the, the airport, right? I mean, goodness. That's insane. Okay, and then we turn left at uh, Charlie 8. That one. That one. This is Charlie 8, supposedly. Let's look at the sign. Charlie 8, indeed. Thank goodness that is consistent. Don't turn off beacons. Strobe. That is actually uh, Charlie 7 a while ago. This is Charlie 8. Oh, that's confusing. Charlie 8 straight to Delta 5. Well, a bit curving. Runway is clear. Go straight into Delta 5. Let's go and check for visual confirmation. Delta 5 indeed. That's the one with the black background. That's where we are. We are almost there, guys. Hang tight. We are almost there. GA parking is almost here. Now, which exact ramp, which exact stand we're going to park in? I guess it's a first come, first serve. <laughs> what I see in the videos is normally there would be like a person who is uh, like a ground crew who is uh, taking care of uh, guiding you where you should park. But in our case, Wow, this is not even cement. This is not even paved. We're on our own here. Fine. Is there a jet nearby? No. Okay, fine, fine. Let's just go and stop here in one of these uh, areas. Do you still have fuel? Yeah, I still have fuel. It's fine, yeah. No need for the map now, but yeah, the map is super useful, especially with large airports like these goodness is that my car my limo waiting for me thank you <laughs> where the heck does one park here sorry for the noise ah those are the lines okay i guess those are supposedly where you're parking so we'll kind of make a u-turn and plop ourselves in one of those white spots very crude what a warm welcome <laughs> but we have arrived what's the name of the airport again? Charlotte? is anyone from around here guys? anyone watching? there we 
go. I guess that kind of works. <laughs> Not the best parking, but I'll take it. Alright, parking brakes on. Lift dump off. Seat plus signs off. Let's turn off everything except the beacons. Lead air off. Lower is low. Oxygen, disarm. Turn off avionics. Um, cut off the fuel. Turn off generator one. Cut off fuel. Engine two. Turn generator off and turn off the battery. And we are good. Let's not forget to submit the job. There we go. 63 gallons of fuel. Let's see how much we earned. No more flight. Let's look at the log. We only earned 2,700. Man, because we spent so much time dilly dallying. But that was such an experience. I think I'm uh, more confident now to get into Vatsim again, knowing that I won't get lost in the airport thanks to Navigraph. Amazing, amazing add on. I don't think I can let this go. Anyway, thank you guys for staying all the way. If you did, let's not forget to open the doors for our fellow. Uh, passengers here there you go put in the chokes and everything like that right and their baggage and all that stuff anyway thank you for watching guys thank you for staying with me all this time i know it's been quite long but i hope you guys enjoyed and hope you learned something or were entertained anyway thank you for watching have a nice day and uh, clumsy flying guys please don't forget to hit the thumbs up hit the like button comment share with your friends and all that stuff right thanks for watching and uh, catch you in the next episode. Hopefully you guys like this kind of videos. Thanks and bye-bye.